Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. It's been a long time coming, but we finally got Emulation Station on Android. So what you're seeing on screen right now is Emulation Station DE running on my Galaxy S24 Ultra, also using a GameSir X2 Pro controller here. And this has been an awesome experience. For the longest time, I've personally been wanting Emulation Station to come to Android, and it's finally here with Emulation Station DE. Now, there are a few things to note before we get started here, but uh, really, I mean, this is awesome. Emulation Station isn't anything new. We've been using it for years on PCs, Linux machines, and even the Raspberry Pi. But given how powerful Android devices are nowadays and what kind of emulators we can run on them, I think this is kind of the perfect pairing. Really nice front end with some awesome themes, great features built in that can be easily set up on your Android phone, tablet, Android mini PC, whatever you want to install this on. And in this video, I'm going to give you a quick rundown on how to get this set up. Basically, I'm going to go over getting it installed, getting some games imported, and a few emulators set up. Once you have that down pat, you can go at this at your own pace. There's a lot built into Emulation Station for Android that we're not going to be taking a look at. But I really want to give you a quick setup guide here just to get you up and running in no time. Now, I did mention there are a few things to note before we get started. At the time of making this, Emulation Station DE is only available on the Amazon App Store, so you will have to sideload that on your Android device. And it's a paid app. It's $5.39. Over on the official Emulation Station DE website, they state that it might come to Google Play sometime down the road, but there's no time frame or anything like that. It very well could come there, but right now we can only get it on the Amazon App Store. And your device will have to be running at least Android 11 for this to function properly. Over on their website, full Android documentation. There's also a frequently asked question section, so I'll leave links for all of that down below. But if you're ready to get this set up on your Android phone, tablet, or Android powered handheld, let's go ahead and jump into it. Setup for Emulation Station DE on Android is actually super simple, but like I mentioned, it's only available on the Amazon App Store at the time of making this video. I've sideloaded the App Store, and basically you can search Emulation or Emulation Station, and it is a paid app. So I've already bought this on the Amazon App Store. I'm going to go ahead and install it. If this is the first time you're installing anything from the Amazon App Store after you sideload it on your device, you may need to allow some storage permissions to allow it to install different applications. But now that we have that installed, it's time to talk about our games and ROMs. But keep in mind, Emulation Station DE doesn't come with any games, ROMs, or even emulators. It's just our front end. So you're definitely going to need some ROMs. Now, Emulation Station DE will download videos, box art, all the metadata for you. You're also going to need to set up your own emulators. But in this video, I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough. So what I've done here is already transfer some games or ROMs over to my Android device from my PC. I've got them in a folder, downloads, retro games, got a few here. So we're going to be focusing on just a few of these systems like Game Boy Advance, Dreamcast, and uh, we'll do, let's say, Genesis also. So I've already got my games on my phone, but we will need to transfer them to the correct folder once we get Emulation Station DE installed and booted up for the first time. So now that we've got it installed, we're going to go ahead and open it up. And it's going to give us a nice little walkthrough. A few things need to be configured before you can use the app. We're going to begin setup. We need to grant Emulation Station permission to manage our storage. We're going to open up the permission screen. We're going to allow that. Back up. Now we need to select our directory. So this is going to be the application data directory. This is not where we're going to be putting our games and ROMs. Basically, what I'm going to do here is just have it on my root storage. So Galaxy S24 Ultra, this is going to be my root storage. And once I choose this path, it's automatically going to set that folder up for us. Now we need to allow Emulation Station to create a ROMs folder for us. So I'm going to select the directory. And again, you can go anywhere you'd like. I'm going to leave this on my root storage. I'm going to use this folder, allow. So now it knows where we want our ROM directory to be located. And Emulation Station is automatically going to create our ROMs folder and our system info.txt for each one of those. We're going to create them now. I understand. And now we're in Emulation Station. But obviously, we don't have any games installed. We've already allowed this to create our ROM directory. So what I'm going to do is quit Emulation Station. Now I'm going to head over to my file manager. And by the way, I'm just using the built-in file manager that comes with this device. You can use any one you'd like. You can download one from Google Play. It's not an issue. So my files. Now we've accessed our internal storage. If we scroll down a bit, you can see we've got a new folder right here. 
ESDE. So this is going to be the emulation station DE directory that it created. This is our application directory. And we also created a ROMs directory. Now this has all of our folders and this should be pretty self-explanatory. For instance, if you want to add some Atari 5200 games, you're going to put your Atari 5200 games in that folder. Moving down a bit. Game Boy Advance. And so on and so on. So like I showed you at the beginning, I've already transferred some games over to my device. They're in my downloads folder, retro games. And from here, we're going to go ahead and move some of these over to our emulation station ROMs directory that it created while setting up the application. So you can actually move each folder if you want to, or we could just go right in and copy all of them. So I've got 30 Game Boy Advance games. We're going to copy, head back to my internal storage. Go to the ROM directory that Emulation Station created for us. We need to paste them in the correct directory. You can also do this from a PC if you want to. But with the file management system in Android 13 and higher, I mean, it's really nice. So I'm going to copy all those right here. So now we've got some Game Boy Advance games in the correct directory. Let's go ahead and move some more. I'm going to head back here. I'm going to grab my Dreamcast games. I'm going to copy these. Internal storage, ROMs, and we'll find Dreamcast. Copy here. And I'll do one more while I'm here. My ROMs that I've already put on my device. We'll do Genesis. You can see I'm using the copy method, but you could use the move method to save space if you need to. Copy, internal storage, ROMs, and we're going to place these in our Sega Genesis folder. Okay. So now, I've got games for Game Boy Advance, Dreamcast, and Sega Genesis. They're in the correct ROMs directory for Emulation Station DE. And now we can actually relaunch the application. And you can see, we've now got some systems listed. So if I head into Dreamcast, we've got our games. But we don't have any artwork or metadata for each one of these games. And that's where the built-in scraper comes in handy. We're going to press our menu button. At the very top, we've got our scraper. And there's a few to choose from. The Games DB is a great option or screen scraper. And for each one of these, for instance, I'm on the Games DB. We're going to move down to our content settings. And this is everything that the scraper is going to get for us game names, other metadata, screenshot images, title images, box cover images, box back. And if we take a look here and just swap this over to the screen scraper, it does have more to offer. So this will also download videos for us. You can deselect any of these that you don't want, but usually I kind of want to get as much as I can for each one of these games. I'm just going to back up one time, scrape these systems. We're going to go with all. And now we can actually start the scraping. It's automatically going to run through it for us. It's going to download all of our metadata, box art, images, whatever you have selected. It's going to try to find the correct information and download it for us. So this could take a little while depending on how many you're scraping. So just let it finish up. Once the scraper is finished, it's going to give you confirmation. So out of my 64 games, 10 were skipped and it's really due to the naming convention. It's the way I have them named. And uh, most of the time you can actually go in and edit that metadata manually if you want to. And I'll show you, for instance, we'll go to GBA. As you can see, we've got some nice box art. I mean, it's starting to look really good, but some of these are missing. And it's really because of the naming convention. If you really want to change this, you can do it manually. Basically, we can edit the game's metadata. So by changing the name, we can rescrape. So I think what's causing this issue here is the USA and Europe at the very end. You can go ahead and edit it directly from here. You can save the data and then rescrape if you want to. But what I'm going to do is just leave it like it is because I've already got a bunch of games here. Moving over to Dreamcast. Should have picked up all of these. Yeah. And this does look really good. And we've got some Sega Genesis games. So that's pretty cool. But now it's time to play these games. Now, in order to do this, Emulation Station DE doesn't come with its own emulators. You will have to download the emulators you want to use, and there's actually a really good way to find out what you need. So we're going to press our menu button. We're going to scroll down to other settings. 
alternate emulators. And for Dreamcast, you can see it's automatically going to use Flycast, but I want to use Redream. So we're going to use the Redream standalone. For GBA, it's going to be using RetroArch, and we can actually choose which core we want. You've got the MGB core, VBAM, or you could go with a standalone emulator. It's really up to you. But for these lower end emulators, personally, I like using RetroArch. So I'm going to leave it right there. Kind of the same thing with Genesis. There is a standalone that you can use, or you can go with RetroArch. If I try to launch a Genesis game right now, nothing's going to happen because I do not have RetroArch installed with the correct core. So what we're going to do for these lower end emulators is head over to Google Play and we're going to download RetroArch. We've got the basic version or plus. I'm going to go with plus. This is free to use. Plus version is a more advanced version. There's more cores that we can choose from. You can go with the regular RetroArch version if you want to. And since I was going to be using Redream for Dreamcast, I've already got it installed. Now that we have RetroArch, we do need to start it up one time. We're going to allow permissions here. RetroArch just did its basic configuration, but now we need to download the core we want to use to play our games. Online Updater, Core Downloader, and remember, we were taking a look at the emulators or the alternate emulators in Emulation Station DE. If you just read through this, you'll get a good idea of what each one of these cores is going to emulate. We're looking for MGBA. We're going to be using that core for our Game Boy Advance games. So if we move down a bit, right here, we're going to go ahead and download that. Now we want a uh, Sega. Now we need to look for a Sega Genesis emulator, and for that we're going to be using Genesis GX. You can experiment with different cores. It's really up to you. Genesis plus GX. That's the one I want to use for my Sega Genesis games. So now that we've got the cores downloaded and RetroArch installed, we can actually move back over to Emulation Station, head into a system we want to play, and we can start playing the game. So we're just going to go with this game. It's going to start up RetroArch for us, and there we have it. So we're playing Ace Combat right now with that MGBA core. I'm using the on-screen touch controls, but RetroArch does register most controllers out there. You can also update the uh, controller profile from within the application. But since I'm using a screen recorder with this Android device, I'm just going to be using the on-screen controls. We're playing GBA right now with RetroArch and that MGBA core, but we launched everything through Emulation Station DE. Now, in order to exit, there's no real clean and cut way right now with Emulation Station. So basically, you could hit your back button a couple times, bring us back into Emulation Station, or you could totally switch apps. So yeah, when it comes to RetroArch with Emulation Station DE, works out really well. But what about standalones? Now, personally, I like using as many standalone emulators as I can, especially with the higher end stuff. Dreamcast. Remember, we're going to be using the Redream emulator here. And in order for this to work correctly, the emulator also needs to know where our games are located. So I'll give you an idea how this is going to work. If I go in right now and try to launch, let's say, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, it's just going to bring us right into Redream. And that's because the emulator itself doesn't know where to launch those games from. So if you haven't set these standalone emulators up correctly, you could definitely run into some issues. But when it comes to Redream, what we're going to do here is tell it exactly where those games are located. Go to Library, Add Directory, and remember, we're going to be using the ROMs folder that Emulation Station DE created because that's where we're placing all of our games. So we now need to tell Redream where they are. We're going to use this folder, Allow, and with this emulator, it automatically populates our games. So we're going to completely exit the emulator, head back over to Emulation Station, and we're going to try that one more time. And there we go. So we're now playing Marvel vs. Capcom 2 using the Redream emulator, but we launched it through Emulation Station DE. Now I don't have my on-screen controls set up properly for this because I've actually been using a real controller with this emulator, but just note, we're ready to go. We can start playing our Dreamcast games. Now that we've covered some of the basics here, you should be able to start playing your games through Emulation Station, but there's a lot more that we can actually do with this. Now, obviously, it looks pretty good like it is, but at the beginning of the video, you saw I had some different themes installed, and these are actually really easy to get up and going. We're going to press our menu button, UI settings, 
theme downloader. We're going to proceed. It's going to populate the list for us, and we can scroll through and download new themes. There's some really good looking stuff in here. And if you really wanted to, I mean, you could just go through, download all of them, but I'm going to go with a few. We'll get the Mania, For All, Epic Noir, Colorful Revisited, and we'll get Coin Ops. Okay, so we've got the themes downloaded in our menu, UI settings, and we can choose which theme we want. I'm going to go with Coin Ops. We'll just back up. It's automatically going to switch everything over for us. And this is a really good looking one. We'll do Dreamcast. Got a nice little wheel there. I've already downloaded all of my box art and everything, so I do have those clear logos, which do make it look really awesome. Let's go ahead and change the theme one more time. We'll go with Colorful Revisited. Just gives us a new look. And if you did want to go through with Screen Scraper, you could download all of the videos, and most of these will have video sections for us to play through. So Emulation Station DE for Android has turned out to be really awesome. I've been testing it on a bunch of different devices. It's also available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. I'll leave a link to the official website down below. Full documentation is over there, and what I showed you in this video just kind of scratched the surface of what can be done with ESDE on Android. There's a ton of stuff built in. You can configure each of those themes that we took a look at, a built-in PDF viewer, an image cleanup process that's built into Emulation Station to delete all of the duplicate images that you may have downloaded over time. There's just a ton that can be done with Emulation Station on Android, and this video was really just to show you how to do a quick setup on it, get some stuff up and running, and from there you can kind of go through it by yourself and figure everything out. Again, full documentation over on the website. And I'd love to know what device you're going to be setting this up on. So let us know in the comments below, be it an Android phone, Android tablet, Android mini PC. And if you're using a controller like the one we have here, let us know your setup down in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.